Hello, everybody, and this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi today. I'm so excited because we have our very special guest back today. She has her own podcast on The Advisor. She's part of our podcast community, and today she's here. And I also want to mention, so you're just aware, she is a guitar teacher, she's a coach, and she's a music educator. So she has various hats that she wears, and she's very good at them. And today, we're going to be actually talking about bridging the gap from music fan to a player. And I'm very excited because she's going to have me do some things with her. And I'm really excited. So listen and learn because you're going to be really impressed with this. So Charlotte, take it away. Thanks, Stacey. I'm excited too because we've talked enough that I know some things about how much you love music and what your experience is and what your experience isn't. And I feel like it matches a lot of your audience, or at least there's going to be some overlap. And I'm excited because I get to do some what I do, which is teaching, coaching. Yeah. So um, I, I chose this topic because it's just so important. And I think it's something that players and non-players sometimes miss. And it, it really fills in a lot. And, and it's bridging that gap between loving music and listening to it and actually being able to play it. So we know that the difference is how you hear. Mm -hmm. We know that musicians hear differently. And, you know, there are all the studies about how um, if you study music when you're young, it changes your brain. So there's actually a difference in the brain of a musician. But it's not something that you just have to be born with. It's you exercise it like any other part of your body or brain. You grow this through using it. Um, so it's conventional wisdom and it's good wisdom. And it's wisdom that I've experienced and observed all my life is that as you study music, you do develop this part of your brain and you do learn to listen more completely, more, more specifically in different ways than a non-listener. And then that makes you a better musician, which makes you a better listener and so on. But here's the thing, if you study music, it takes time. Of course, it's gonna take time to develop, you know, change your brain anyway, but it's gonna take more time if all you do is just learn pieces on the piano or on the guitar or whatever your instrument is, one after another, um, with not without changing your intention or your way of thinking. You will right. still get there, but you might not actually. So these are the two things that I've come up with. It's one is that you don't even have to play an instrument to develop this. Think about people who produce music. They don't. They may play an instrument, they may not, but they have really developed their ears or sound text. You develop your ear through your intention and through particular ways of listening or approaching listening. So there's that. So you can accelerate your musicianship just through developing your ear that way. But there's also something that I, I haven't heard anybody talk about either. And that is that, that I have observed over so many years of teaching is that there are people who can play music for years and years and years and still never really develop that very much. Yeah. Why? Because they're not thinking of doing it that way. We have a habit of doing something a certain way unless we intentionally change that and come around to a different way, we might not do it, yeah. right? And so then you're running around going, I have been studying this instrument for all these years and I'm like this much better. I want to be a whole lot better. Why yeah. do I still not have this? Because we need to shift your awareness. It's just like anything else. It's like anything you want to learn or heal, You, it's a shift in awareness, right? It's pretty mm -hmm. cool. You feel like you have the power to do that. Yeah. So, um, so what I've seen people, and I, I've watched you, I've listened to you over these episodes, and you you say frequently, oh, music just changes everything. It can change my day. It changes the way I feel. And you talk a lot about the way it makes you feel. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. That's what music should do for us, and we should love that and enjoy it. But if we want to play it, we have to know more than that. We right. can't something if we don't really know what that something is right yes. this theme in my life like I can go on I want this I want this I want this for years and then one day I wake up and go I haven't gotten clear on what that is maybe when I get clear it'll give me a chance to get it right yes. so I think that 
I'm not alone in that. I think a lot of us go through that, maybe all of us. <laughs> so we need to know more about what that music is. So, you know, what, what's happening when you listen, I believe, is it washes over you. It just washes over you. You just bask in that. You know, it makes you feel sad. It makes you feel happy, whatever. But when right. a musician hears it, they still get that. When you get educated, you don't get less. You get more for it. Yeah. So what I want to really focus on today and bring your attention to, bring your listeners' attention to, is are the three elements of music that you can really get the most bang for the buck. They're the most important elements of music and they're the ones if you start focusing on those and learning how to listen to them more mm-hmm. acutely then you will accelerate your learning and even if you don't play an instrument your enjoyment of music okay right so those three elements are rhythm melody and harmony okay now i want to ask you because you know I, i'm I'm using you as someone who is uh, a lover of music and has followed music her whole life and maybe dabbled with a few lessons when you were young, but not really gone deeply into learning music. Do you feel like you know what melody is? I think I know a, I know a little bit about it. I don't think I know deeply into in depth about what true melody really is. How would you just describe it in a few words? Just a simple, I mean, I'm not looking for an in-depth thing. I wouldn't be able to talk about in-depth either unless we went to a big analysis. But but just can you, what do you think it is? Like which part of the song would you define as the melody? I think the melody is the the calm, soothing, or the the message behind it, the music that that makes it come to life. The melody, you know, it's really, I think, the music that makes the words come to life. You have the the singer who who really, you can tell, sings from the heart and the soul. Or that, you know, you have those singers that just sing. But those singers that sing and they connect with the melody, which is the music, and they make it become alive, you know, and, it, and, it's, and it's portraying a specific message that really touches the heart. So I'm really, really glad I asked you that question because that... <laughs> I would not have guessed that answer, even though I know how you, you know, felt like I knew how you listen to music, but that's just an elaboration on it washes over me, kind of the feeling. Okay. Mm -hmm. So melody, let's, I'm going to just define melody very simply for you. It's the part you sing. Mm -hmm. It's the melodic line that you would walk away whistling or humming, even if it doesn't have words. It's that. Da, 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 that's the melody to Mary Had a Little Lamb. Whether you're plunking it out on some kid's instrument or whatever, it doesn't have to be right. beautiful. It just is the melody as written by the composer. Okay. okay. So that's, that's good. We have a definition of melody. Okay. Now let's see um, what your idea of harmony is. Do you have a way to describe what your definition of harmony would be? So harmony, um, to me, harmony is the, the music that it, it kind of reaches, it has a a certain, a certain flow to it. And it, for me, harmony kind of brings the music, um, kind of, a, it, it kind of connects with me it's the connection from the the music to to my, to my soul you know it's the that it's the, it's the sounds behind the words that kind of kind of really first um really hit hit the heart you know for me as the listener you're killing me <laughs> you are so perfect there's not another person on the planet that could give better answers than <laughs> no idea <laughs> awesome okay so again, you're describing feelings. Mm-hmm. Yay! I'm glad you had those feelings. Now I'm going to tell you what harmony is. Okay. <laughs> Two or more notes played simultaneously. Okay. So that's what we call chords. Like if you're strumming a chord on the guitar or finger picking, but if you're playing a chord on the guitar, or if you when you're playing the piano, usually the chords are in the left hand if you're playing the melody in the right hand. So some instruments can't produce harmony. A flute okay. can't, unless unless your ear can follow it, you know, arpeggios like a chord played one note at a time. But you know, in the conventional way of thinking of harmony, 
you have to be able to produce at least two notes simultaneously. So that's the okay. harmony. Okay. okay. So, so now, uh, you know, guitar is my instrument, my primary instrument. So what we're down to is the melody is the part I'm going to sing, or maybe lead playing if it's playing the melody, not just improvisation, but if it's playing the given melody that the composer wrote. So we have melody, we have harmony, which is the chords that you play. Okay, now mm -hmm. we have thing that might be a little, uh, there might be more overlap in the way people would describe it, which is rhythm. So do you want to have uh, weigh in on what you think rhythm is? Rhythm is the music that has it. It has kind of like a upbeat rhythm, or it it may have a different different vibe than upbeat, but it's it's the rhythm of the music, the repetitive sound that kind of that kind of makes the song, you know, uh, actually, um, you know, give give it life, you know, and bring meaning. That drives it, and yeah, and it gives. Okay, I like that. So. One of the things you said is repetitive, and that was um, indicative of one of the types of rhythm in a song, which is we're going to call the pulse. Okay. It's like the it keeps going and, and repeats, right? Okay. And then there's another kind of rhythm in music that I want to talk about today, and, and I'm going to put you through some things with which is the melodic rhythm. Now you might, after having talked about melody, you might have an idea of what that means, but let me go ahead and express it in, in teacher way. Okay. You have the melody, and then you have the rhythm of the melody, the melodic <laughs> rhythm. So in other words, like if you're if you're saying, I've been working on the railroad, you, the melodic rhythm would be. Okay. Okay. That's super important. It's more important than most people realize. And it's the thing that really gets uh, people stumbling a lot. I know from my guitar students, and and I will talk about that more later if you'll remind me. <laughs> okay. So, melodic rhythm. So now, you know, you want to listen to those three things, rhythm, harmony, and melody. Okay. okay. So yeah, we, we chose a song. Um, I chose a song and you queued it up and mm -hmm. I chose the song because I thought that the most people would be familiar with it. It's a great tune and it's not real complicated in trying to sort out which is which of these three elements of music. And and we like it. Everybody likes this song. So mm -hmm. um, what I want you to do is just play a segment of it and then stop it and then sing back in your most unaffected who cares what it sounds like I don't know what I'm doing voice because that's how most of the, us run into this stuff and now first before you do that I want to tell you you are awesome I can't believe you're going to do this in front of people <laughs> <laughs> I tell people I, as I told you I tell my students you know if you have to be vulnerable to do this and my students do it just one-on-one -on -one with me and they're very safe but you are a great sport so we're going to do this I want you to not just like any other of my students, I don't want you to try and be great or sound wonderful. Uh -huh. <laughs> Get it out there so we can tell kind of what's going on in your head. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so I'm just going to warn you. I do. Go ahead. This, I am not a singer by no means. And <laughs> I definitely, I'm the person you don't want to hear when you play karaoke. So just more forewarning, okay. guys. <laughs> we got it. We got the warning. <laughs> So you want me to play the the, the I segment now? Play it and then when I say stop, just stop it and then sing back what you heard to the best of your ability. Okay. All right. Hey, Jude, don't make it bad. Take a sad song, make it better. Okay, that's good. Okay. All right, so you want me to sing it now? Yeah, sing it. All right. Hey, Jude, don't play a sad song. Make it glad, make it better. Okay, awesome. All right, so that's really good. You struggle with the lyrics, that's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And that's another thing we can talk about too. A lot of people struggle with the lyrics and I have ways to help you with that too. But um, the thing that was pretty 
pretty wonderful about what you did is you have a good sense of the melodic rhythm. Okay, you don't have, like you said, when, the reason you said you don't want to hear me at karaoke is because you haven't developed your pitch sense and you don't have the confidence in it, but but you could, you know, yeah. I could help you with that. You could definitely do that. You have a good sense and you have a, a really good sense of the melodic rhythm. So let me, let me go into the melodic rhythm again. Um, well, first of all, I just want to emphasize this is the first thing you want to listen for in a song. It's the melody. Okay. And okay. You, just because you can sing along with the recording, one of my students was telling me yesterday, we were talking about something similar. And he said, yeah, I feel like, you know, when I turn it off, I'm not, I, I said, it's like the music is dragging you with me. He said, right. It feels like you, you turn off the recording and like you just fall flat, right? Then that means you don't really have it. So before you start to play a song, you want to be able to sing it because you cannot play it if you can't hear it. And if you can okay. hear it, you can at least do a decent job of singing it, like what you just did. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so melodic rhythm, I'm going to go back to that because I, as I was saying, that's really important. So what you did was you sang the melodic rhythm correctly. You went, hey, Jude, don't make it bad. You had that space in between. I call it, because I've got experience in visual arts when I was young, especially, I call it negative space. You know that the positive space and negative space in the visual yeah. like space, space thing, like you can shift your vision, you can see an image and you shift it another way and you see a different image in the negative space. Well, music yeah. has negative space. It's super important. And a lot of people only hear what I call, nobody else calls it, the, the positive space, like where the words and the, the melody are actually doing something. But that something in between the doing something makes the whole thing. So think of think of music, a song, think of a song like in a, in a um, container, mm -hmm. like maybe a square and it fits in there. And so the, the pieces have to fit. So it's not just all this color or shape. It's also stuff in between that gives it the shape. Right. So you want to pay attention to those. How long is it? Hey, Jude, don't make it bad. Break a sad. See what I'm saying? You get, mm -hmm. leave that. That's what gets people when they're trying to play guitar and they're strumming and they're not getting the right number of beats in the measure. So, so the next thing you'll listen for is that pulse. That's your steady pulse. One, two, three, four. It'd be good if you know, is it something that can be divided by two or by three? We'd call that duple right. time. If it's two, triple time by three. This one can be divided by two. So, hey, June, don't make it bad. I want to be able to clap it and sing it. Right. If you can do that, you are like 90% of the way toward playing on your guitar. Okay. Oh, yeah. So now you've got the, mel the melody and two kinds of rhythm, melodic rhythm and pulse. And then all you have left is harmony. So we're going to listen to the song again. If, if it's possible, what I want you to do to, is put it back at the beginning. And when you hear the chord change, and you might not get this right. That's okay. That's part of the deal. You got to get it wrong sometimes to tell how to get it right. Yeah. So when you chord change don't stop the recording just raise your hand so when i and when i when, when I, you hear a chord change in the music like the harmony changes like, okay yeah okay so stop it when i get to that point okay no, no don't stop it just raise keep the recording going because it's going to happen at oh. number. so every okay. time i should put it that way every time you hear a chord change raise your hand and put it back down again to wait for the next one and then raise your hand the next time it comes around okay so i know this is our communication, so I know. All right. It's you don't make it bad. Take a sad song, make it better. Remember to let her into your heart, then you can start to make it better. Okay, good. All right, so you got some of them, you missed a few, okay? okay? Now, this is something you develop your ear, okay? So this is something when you have written music, you can look at it and go, oh, there's one. There's a chord change on that word. Helps if you have words. On that word, and I'm going to go back and listen to it now and see 
Oh, I hear it. You know, go back and listen again. There it is. Now I hear it. I didn't hear it before, but now that I see it written there, it's pointed out to me that's where that harmony changes. Okay. Okay. So you want to listen to all music this way, but before you learn a song, really do this because otherwise you're just trying to do something that's almost mechanical or robotic. It's not connected to your ear, to your heart and soul. Right. And neither will it connect to anyone else's very well. But it's like you're trying to memorize these just like um, random things. They don't make sense. They don't form into some picture. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to get the whole picture. Right. Yeah. Does that, do you I, feel like, do you feel like you are getting what I'm talking about or that, you know, you're expanding your ideas in any way with this so far? Yeah, I never, I never really looked at music where I stop and I really analyze. I just listen when I listen, but I never really, you know, stop to listen to the chords and when, when the melody has changed and, and to, you know, really see, you know, the, the differences. I never, I never went really behind the words, you know, I, I, um, I always listened and it, it brought me emotion, but I never really stopped to kind of just focus on the chords and focus on the melody and to see where the the changes occur in the in the sound you know as as they're playing the song so i i never looked at music in that sense in that way well you know i think you really enjoy listening to all music this way i mean just take take a few songs that you listen to frequently or you've known for a long time and listen to them with these three one at a time one at a time, these things in mind. Melody, oh, can I sing that? Yeah, you, know, you can do what we did. I think this is a great way to, to start learning melodies is play a part of a song, a section, right. and then turn it off, sing it back, then go to the next part, turn it off, sing it back, turn it off, sing it back. Okay. okay. Then go back and, I mean, first thing you can do, and you can do this anytime, is just, you know, tap the rhythm. People do that anyway, usually unconsciously with your foot or you're moving or whatever mm -hmm. um, and, and then clap the melodic rhythm right and check that against the recording so clap the melodic rhythm um or have someone else check it for you but again that's the thing that trips up more people than anything else in my many years of teaching it is rampant so and, and I'll, I'll tell you something I have two sisters and when we were kids and riding in the car or in the backseat together, we would make up games. Mm -hmm. you know, games, yeah. Mm -hmm. And a game that we made up, and and I asked my my twin sister the other day, and she remembered this, and it was like, uh, kind of maybe not, whatever. But this is so clear to me, and I feel like it's been one of the most uh, helpful things for me in my music life, is that this game we'd make, we would play is, one would tap one person would tap on the other person's back. And we didn't know what the name for, it, but we were tapping the melodic rhythm to a song. And the person who was whose back was getting tapped on would have to guess the name of the song. Right? So so like if I tapped on your back, I'd tap. And you'd say, Hey Jude. But you can right. see how if I didn't leave all that space in between the claps, you would never yeah. get it. It's not the song. It defines the song, you know. So you can do that. You can start clapping melodic rhythm. And if you have a metronome or you put a metronome app on your phone, it's, you know, there's a million of them for free. Just have that yeah. quick track and then you can clap to that. And then yeah. it's where you can get one hand clapping the the melodic rhythm and the other clapping them. You know, so you're doing both of them. When you're doing both of them, you're singing and strumming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's how um, so you can listen and practice. But I think when you start, like when you go to listen to live music, if you start really listening to the chord changes or listening to the melodic rhythm or you know just focusing on different aspects of it it'll right. start to get more and more it'll get easier but it'll also get more exciting to listen to music 
and easier to play it for sure. Bridging that gap. Yeah. So again, I just want to say that, you know, I've had students who've played for years and don't do that because right. they think of it. <laughs> I can't <laughs> Just in, like you have this habit of listening a certain way and then you're going to play and that's an, another thing to you but it's not another thing it's the same thing expanded right wow that's pretty cool you know I never I never looked at music in that sense like I know because I, I, I'm not a musician so I never I guess I never focused on those things but those are things that always attracted me to to a song it was the rhythm it was the, the rhythm kind of put me in the mood, you know, the melody kind of put me in the mood and, you know, the voice behind it brought it to life. And I never really, I never really paid attention to, you know, I, I, well, I kind of did, but I didn't really, you know, look at it in the same way that you're describing, you know, because they do repeat the certain, a lot of times the certain lyrics over and over and over again throughout the song. And sometimes there's only, there's only like a couple of different lyrics really to a song and they're repeating it, you know, and then just adding a few words here and a few words there. And then you have like, you know, songs that have become bestsellers, you know, that have been on the number one charts, you know, and basically, if you really look, listen to the song, it's like, it's like maybe four, four, you know, really repetitive, you know, uh, lines of music, you know, and then you have, you know, a few, a few words here, a few words here, and a few words here that change it up. But overall, it's kind of repeating itself throughout the whole, whole song. And it's like, and, and those are, those are the times when the music would change and get powerful, but it would be the, the, the music would stay the same too. It would go, you know, the course of the music along with the lines too. And, and the way they vocalized it is the way it, it came to life and the, and the emotions and the, and the energy that it brought, brings out in a person too. You can, you know, a song can bring out a high level of energy. A song can make you sad you know, a song could just mellow you and bring calmness to you, you know, so there's, there's so many types, you know, the way the, you know, the way the melody, the way the rhythm is, the way the vocals, you know, are, you know, it, it could be, it could be go so many ways. And I've seen people take one specific song and it could be an ener energetic song. And then I see someone else, you know, sing it differently with different music behind it. And it's become a common song, you know, so it's like, you know, it, 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 it really depends, I guess, on the artist, too, and yeah, how the they decide to use the music. Yeah. But a lot of what you were describing, and I'm glad you did, too, because it, I wanted to mention this is also another important thing to listen for is, is the structure, the form. Because, you know, when you were talking about it does this and then it repeats, it does it. So you were describing and the power of it actually is like. Like in poetry, A, A, B, A, B, C, whether there are going to be patterns, there's going to be this structure and then that structure is repeated, verse, mm -hmm. verse, maybe. And then there might be a chorus, right? Or there might be a bridge and then a chorus. So, yes. You know, for the most of the music we listen to, there'll be only two or three different sections. Mm -hmm. And then, and then how they repeat you know, bring some of these feelings about, like everything we talk about, the melodic line, the direction mm -hmm. that goes up and down, the melodic rhythm, the harmony, which is the chords that are underneath supporting that melody, the rhythm, the structure, the form, all of those things is what makes you feel the things you feel. Right. right? So, so they're good to listen to and for and learn about when you want to produce those sounds. And you know, Stacy, just talking to you and what your feelings and thoughts and perceptions are, um, you know, I think you could get a little hand drum mm -hmm. and just, you know, be able to participate. You wouldn't even have to take any big lessons or anything. Just do something where you're actually participating as a musician or you're making some music, you know, aside yeah. from recording. But also, you know, what I've heard with your, um, your singing is that you could you could hone that. You can learn to sing on pitch. And and I know you can. <laughs> <laughs> but I know you're close enough that it wouldn't even be a big leap, you know. So um, all of those things, you know, just if you're just singing in the shower, singing in the car, it's still more fun when you feel like, oh, that sounds like I wanted the sound. Yeah. You know? 
Yeah, that's the fun playing music by yourself. You know, you don't have to have, it's an intrinsic motivator as opposed to the extrinsic. Like, you know, it's not for somebody else to listen to. It's for you to enjoy. When I was singing with my kids in the room, they would go like this to me. <laughs> That's cruel. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> but they love you. <laughs> they love me, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, you have a sense of when it goes up, when it goes down. Again, it's an awareness. You know, if you if your intention is to find that note and you have a few tips as to how to do it, you could do it. Yeah. Yeah. So um but honing in more and more and more into what's actually going into your ears. Right. Then your brain actually changes. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. And all those things that I'm like, stop talking about it because music has its own value apart from this. But but it does help you in aging. And, you know, it shows your cognitive abilities will be enhanced. And oh, yeah. And together as you go through your older years, if you have music in your in your life, um, not not just wash up your kind of music, but the tune into it kind of music. <laughs> Playing an just, instrument actually can help with like alzheimer's dementia it can help with the prevention right. of it right but you see that's because when you're playing an instrument it makes those changes in your brain that i'm referring to yeah and we can start those changes without even playing an instrument mm -hmm. that's that's what i'm trying to get across in this show is that you know i'm not trying to say don't play an instrument because yes mm -hmm. play an instrument <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. awesome you'll love it and the world will be a better place but mm -hmm. Um, but you don't have to reach a certain level as a musician to start making those brain changes and getting the enjoyment and also the cognitive benefits. Right. Yeah, I I kind of like that. You know, it, it makes me look at music in a whole different manner now. You know, like I, I never looked at music in, in that sense. You know, now I'll be listening to it a little bit differently now that I know, you know, this stuff. Yay, that's awesome. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's, it, you need to really practice too, because it's like, you know, today was like an abundance of information, but I think if you keep learning about it and you keep practicing it, it becomes easier because then the material kind of, you know, you, you, you get it more, the more you practice it, the more you understand it. And then if you have an instrument that you're playing and then you're listening to the music, listening to it differently than the listener that doesn't play an instrument and you start really practicing it, can, it kind of puts you in a whole different perspective. And as you're practicing, you get better and, and you also start to look at music differently and you start to listen. And if you ever looked on those TV shows where they have singer, the, the singers are in competitions with each other, you'll notice like um, you'll notice like when the judges are listening and they're musicians, they have, they're listening like this and they're just, you know, they're very, they're not listening like a, someone like me and they're not in their head yes you know and they're and they're looking for specific things you know as the as the singer is on stage singing so you could see that they're, they're they're in a whole different world you could just see it by their facial expression they're not they're not on the same wavelength as as a regular listener like myself yeah yeah and you're so right you have to practice it yeah. yeah. The more you practice it, the better you get it, the easier it gets, and it becomes natural. And then you can go to the next level of listening and playing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 100%. 100%. I think when I was taking piano lessons, if the piano teacher kind of taught me like that, I think it. I would have done, I would have, I would have kind of got it a lot easier, you know, than I did, you know, because for me it oh, was yeah. difficult, but I, she never taught me those type of methods you know so it, for me it was like you said more mechanical more robotic and then maybe that's why i was having such a hard time you know whereas if i was really listening to the music and then you know listening to the the rhythm you know and and listening to the melodies and 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 focusing on those type of things that we just talked about 
and then try to play the song, you know, and learn the keys as I would, but still listen in and listen to the notes differently than just a robotic, you know, okay, this is C, this is A, and, you know, and I think I would have gotten it a lot easier. Well, and what you're describing from your teacher is typical. I mean, that's the way music is taught. I, you're not, I don't know if you're going to hear somebody talk the way I'm talking, but I'm, I'm sure there are other people who think this way. And I know that there's some like um, methods that really rely on the ear more or encourage the ear more. But um, in, in piano, it's just, a, it's so typical that teachers will actually um, punish their students for using their ear. They're like, no, no, you need to look at the music. You know, you're using your, and they don't want this, the student to hear what it sounds like, or, you know, they don't want to include that ear. They want it to be the symbol to where you poke. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, but music is not symbols. Music is sound. Yeah. And and that loses a lot of people because you go in all excited wanting to play an instrument and your teacher says, no, you're going to. Yeah do these symbols and you can put your fingers where you're supposed to put your fingers. Well, yeah, I mean, there's some things that are good that are going to happen from that. But, you know, if the joy is taken away and the connection, well, where are you? Right. Yeah. So now I... with guitar is different because so many people just don't even take guitar lessons. They say, I'm not doing that. You know, <laughs> And I want to talk about this. Maybe this will be our next show because I want to talk about the resistance. It it has brought up a resistance to learning that yeah. is not helpful. But I understand. It's like I'm not I'm not going to do that thing where I'm separated from the music. I'm going to dive in and do the music. You know, yeah. the more you learn, the better you're going to do with the music. So anyway, that's another show. But <laughs> your experience, you know, is is typical. Yeah. So it's never too late. <laughs> no, it's never too late. I think you could, you know, it doesn't matter what age you are. You could all, you always have time to learn an instrument, you know, and, and, and if it's on your bucket list and if it's something you always wanted to do, you know, I say go for it. You know, I, I it doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter if you're you're 15 or or, you, or you're 65, you know, or, you know, even in your 70s, you know, like it doesn't matter what age you are. You know, it's it's such a, a rewarding experience to learn something new. And if it's something that you've always wanted to do, why not? You know, like just like a, a traveler, you know, they've always wanted to go to a certain destination and they finally do it, you know, so it can be the same thing with an instrument, you know, it's, it's, it's just making it joyful, yeah. you know, definitely. some of my best students have been retired because then they have the time to devote to it. Yeah. So if you, if you're raising a family and working a stressful job, you don't have time to spend on learning an instrument. Yeah. If you're a kid, you might. Um, but if you're retired, yeah, it's your time to, to do you. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I agree. So, uh, I, I want to um, throw out there a way you, you were talking about practicing it. And remember, I think it was the first of these episodes, the series on limitless learning, limitless life. I was, I was putting together the song book of uh, yes. the world still needs these songs is what I called it. Songs from the public domain. Mm -hmm. And it's on my website for free. You can get the songbook, uh, 20 songs that are all songs I would recommend for doing this with when you're playing or just not playing. But it's good because I, I have the standard notation so you can watch the melody when it goes up and down and up and down. You can see the long notes or the breaks or the rests, you know, and you now you can actually get a visual representation of, of that sound. Um, it has the chords, so you can see where the harmony changes. I have okay. links to recordings of, by a fabulous artist for, and on YouTube for all the songs. And I, and you can play them all with simple chords. So even as a beginner, you could play. I mean, a lot of the songs you could play as a rag beginner. Learn three chords and you're off and running. Right. So I'm going to recommend, if you'll put this link in, in the show notes. Oh. 
I definitely will. I'll put it in the description so everybody will have it. And then they can just click onto the link and go right to the download and download a free copy and get started. You know, and that sounds amazing. Yeah, it's it's good. And they're, they're wonderful songs and wonderful recordings of them too. So if all you want is a, a great playlist, <laughs> you have a new playlist. But that's awesome. Yeah, check that out. Now tell everybody the different services that you have available that you you have on your website and, and the different things that you do for, for your clients and so forth. Thanks. Okay, so I teach one-on-one -on -one guitar lessons, but also coaching. So teaching is where you learn the skills. You know, I'm, I'm giving you the skills. Coaching, which is um, something I do when I'm teaching anyway, because it's natural to me, as you might have yeah. noticed, mm -hmm. <laughs> to um, guide people toward how to learn these these things they need to learn. Yeah. Learning about learning. And right. that's very individualized. Um, I wrote You and Your Guitar, which is a two book set for people who want to do this for themselves so that I can guide you toward teaching yourself. Yeah. Um, also provide support for that. So you can, you know, real cheap, just send me a, a video of your playing a song and say, is this right? What's wrong? Fix it. And I'll send you back a report. You can book a lesson or a coaching session, same price for either one. Um, you can book a whole series. You can come once a week. You can come once, period. You can do a six-month transformational coaching series. So all of that is on my lessons and coaching pages. And then I have all the books that I've written um, that are more method books. Right. Uh, theory, ear training, and how, you know, the, the where to put your fingers part, the nuts and bolts of it. Although all of those also have guidance on how to learn. So I have a series of books, uh, basically pretty much what you'll need. And then if you take lessons, like say you decide you want to take some lessons, you just can show up at your lesson and tell me, I want to learn this song. And I'm like, okay, right. whatever song it is, I'll be able to show it to you if you give me a link to if I've never heard, if I've heard it, if I haven't heard it, I'll hear it there. And then I'll show you what happens. And, and at the same time, I'll be teaching you the skills you need, not only for that song, but to take it, take into further other songs, you know, so we just kind of take it from there. Um, but the coaching is really for people who already play. Yeah. And the teaching would be like, if you are either a ranked beginner or somewhere in the beginning stages, some people contact me. I played for 30 years. I'm still a beginner. Very common. Yes. Let's do lessons. And then we'll work through, okay, I think you need to do once a week, or if you want to go down to twice a month, that's fine, or whatever, you know. So it's it's how you want to do it. <clears throat> Excuse me, I also have the, the books and the materials in bundles. If you if you go onto the site and you I have a way for you to tell what is the best bundle for you, you know. So I need this, that, and the other. And then for everybody, whether you're buying books or taking lessons or not should check out the virtual studio because it's filled with lessons audio video and text you get 30 days free you can learn a lot in 30 days yeah. it's got courses you know courses for each level a course for ear training different kinds of courses um so you can do a lot of that in 30 days and then if you decide to stick with it it's 9.95 a month so it's not a big investment you know it's probably going to do better than if you buy one one book you know then you if you if you're in the studio you can get all this information you know the information from that book plus a whole bunch more right so kind of a long answer but that's what i provide and it's fun yeah that's wonderful now what's your website that people can go to to find you limitless-guitar.com limitless guitar if you google it it'll, it should come up or Guitar Charlotte Adams or Charlotte Guitar or Guitar Limitless, Charlotte Limitless, whatever. Um, that's it. I'm Charlotte Adams. My my website is limitlessguitar.com and I'm on Facebook, YouTube, um, Twitter, and LinkedIn. So find me. Awesome. <laughs> you're you're easy to find. <laughs> I, before we go, I just want you to emphasize on I, if you guys give give everybody a couple of takeaways and everything we did today and, and we talked about today. 
what are some things you'd like to leave people with some thoughts and some, and some takeaways that you would like to really, you know, kind of emphasize on? Okay. I think uh, just a brief summary would be that the difference between a non-musician and a musician is the way they listen. And it's actually something that goes on in the brain. And it's a, it's a part of the brain that gets developed as you develop your musicianship and you can develop that part of your brain and, and your enjoyment and your understanding of music um, without having to go. I mean, you can start now and you yeah. can concurrently develop that in your musical skills or however you want to balance those two out. But the, for everyone, regardless of whether you play music or not, it's going to enrich your life if you start listening in these ways. And I would recommend listening for rhythm, harmony, melody, and then your know, form structure. Just think about those things when you're listening to music and see everything change. And just the exercises we did today kind of made me listen to music in a different manner that I wasn't used to. And it made me made me really pay attention to things that I normally don't pay attention to. So it was very, really interesting. And, and it's, it's a different way of listening to music. And it's a different way of appreciating music also. Good. I hope you enjoy it. That's I did. My enjoy it. <laughs> Well, you accomplished it. I yeah. want to tell you, Charlotte, this has been an amazing um, podcast today. I really had a lot of fun, you know, doing this music lesson with you. And I think you're the greatest. You are wonderful at what you do. You're passionate. You're compat. You know, you you have such compassion for for music and for helping others. You're, you're not just doing it to doing it. You're doing it because you love it. And you really want to change people's lives and bring joy to people's lives. You definitely, you know, from the time that I've met you and uh, to this present point, I've learned so much about you and you are just a wonderful person and you are a, a person that I really look up to and I, I love what you do. And I, I, I like to tell people that I highly recommend you as, as a guitar teacher, educator, and coach and you are just a, a beautiful person and you have such a beautiful way of teaching so i just want to let people out there to know that you know if you really want to appreciate music in a different way if you've always had a dream about in the back of your head about learn how to play and maybe you didn't think you were capable or maybe you always wanted to but you you kind of put it on the back burner charlotte is really the person you want to talk to and work with because she is just amazing and i i don't say that because she, we're, she's on our podcast and I say that because I really mean it. I, I she is a true testament to to the to the appreciation, love, and the value of music. And I really I love what you do. And thank you. <laughs> and you just this is so hard to not cry. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, Stacy. And I think you're wonderful too. I appreciate you so deeply. And I love that we're getting to know each other through these podcasts. Yes, me too. I'm glad, I'm glad we found each other. It's really helpful to me on so many levels. Yes, same here. Same here. Okay. I look forward to seeing you on the next I show. Do. I do. Thanks. You're welcome. You have a great day. I love you, you baby. I love you too. Bye. Bye-bye.